<laughs> Good evening. I'd like to call the City Council meeting of Monday, October 16, 2023 to order. If I can have our City Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Flores. Present. Deputy Mayor Noble. Here. And Councilmember Tharp. Present. And Councilmember Dugo. Here. Councilmember Diaz. Here. Councilmember Bousquet. Here. May we have a quorum. All rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All right, a motion made by Council Member Bousquet, second by Deputy Mayor Noble. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that motion carries 5-0. All right, moving on to comments from the public for agenda items only. Anyone wishing to speak on any agenda items, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Once again, it's on any agenda item. State your name and address for the record. Good evening, Mayor, Council Member. Could you put the Could you put the mic up? Up to. Sorry. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members, City Manager, City Attorney, City Clerk, and Assistant City Clerk. I'm Phil Dodzik. I have a degree in Economics, Labor Organization Engineer, and Practice Law. In the American Bar Association, I'm an active member of the Republican Presidential Task Force and GOP Republican National Committee representative for the state of Florida. I live in Green Acres community ac across the street. This is my work report regarding the city at uh, the meeting on October 2nd. The meeting was one hour long where awards were given to individuals and the certain organizations. The meeting discussed two points that were important but not important for citizens in terms of whether living social and cultural life. We can never say that it is not our job or we are not competent. If so, we need to fight against the one who prevent us. We see a constant increase in the prices of food, gasoline, and cost for, for electricity, water, and list goes on, not to mention the, the purchase of cars, homes, vehicle insurance, where every month we see an increase in prices with the explanation that the reason is that the drivers drive Recklessly. This fact is also in other states and the insurance prices there are much lower. We had, have had the problems with the minimum wage for a long time. Effective September 30th, uh, 2023, Florida's uh, minimum wage will be $12 per hour. A worker with $12 works full time and yields $2,016. When we subtract average 15% from the amount for cost that go to the state, the new amount of wages is $1,713. The apartment rent is 1500 for one bedroom in the average area. The cost of food, gasoline, car payments, clothes, and other things are much higher than the monthly salary of the worker of 1713.60. In this aspect of poor living conditions, citizens are forced to ask for financial help from the state, where the state approves those requests and does not approve, but in present uh, but in pre uh, percentage uh, terms it does. The proposal is better to increase the minimum wage from work so that in that case the state does not give aid and all those funds that were uncontrollably given to the citizen are put in the city budget and 30 seconds specifically for the infrastructure of the city and better life for the citizen unemployment is now it is necessary to recall the democratic party to give to give uh, the green light i will give it to you an example of high prices for food Publix, store and bodegon where you can't go inside to shop without a minimum of $300. The prices are very high and out of control, and they have no business being here, and they should be recalled to fix it. I have much more to say, and that is for now. I am ready to help you in everything to bring the condition to excellent. At the next meeting more, if the changes in the bad condition that are present are seen, when they are fixed, we will move on to make the city of Green Acres great again. Thank you for your time to listen to my speech. Have a nice night. Thank you. I, I allowed that because he referred to the, uh, the previous agenda item, but uh, anyone wishing to speak, if there is any, uh, anything to do with the agenda, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. All right, seeing none, all right, moving on to our special business. 
Uh, the first um, special business item tonight is a proclamation for Na National Disability Employment Month um, for October 2023. If I can have our city clerk please read uh, the proclamation. Proclamation of the City Council of the City of Green Acres proclaiming October 2023 as National Disability Employment Awareness Month. October 2023 marks the 78th anniversary of National Disability Employment Awareness Month. The purpose of National Disability Employment Awareness Month is to educate about disability employment issues and celebrate the many and varied contributions of America's workers with disabilities. Since 1994, Best Buddies has successfully placed thousands of adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities in competitive, integrated employment. Therefore, the City of Green Acres do hereby proclaim the month of October 2023 as National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to call Bela Hirsch and Tyler Jasensky uh, from Best Buddies to come forward and receive the proclamation. Good evening. My name is Bela Hirsch, and I'm a Florida State Ambassador for Best Buddies. And I'm here to talk about something near and dear to our hearts, National Disability Employment Awareness Month, or NDEAM. This observance, held annually in October, is a moment to recognize and celebrate the significant contributions of workers with disabilities in the workforce. In our society, every individual brings a unique set of skills, talents, and perspectives to the table. Yet, for those with disabilities, accessing employment opportunities has historically been challenging due to the misconceptions and barriers. NDEAM aims to change this narrative, promoting inclusivity and equal opportunities for everyone. Now, why does Best Buddy celebrate NDEAM with such enthusiasm and passion? At the core of Best Buddy's mission is the belief that everyone deserves the chance to live a fulfilling life, which includes meaningful employment. We celebrate NDEAM because it aligns seamlessly with our commitment to create a world where individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities have not just a seat at the table, but an active role in the workplace. For those unfamiliar with Best Buddies, we are a global movement dedicated to fostering one-to-one -one friendships, integrated employment, and leadership development for individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Through our programs, we've witnessed firsthand the transformative power of employment. It not, it's not just about earning a, a living, it's about dignity, independence, and the realization of dreams. Celebrating NDE AM in our, is our way of shining a spotlight on the incredible capabilities and potential of individuals with disabilities. It's a call to action, urging businesses, organizations, and communities to break down barriers and create environments that embrace diversity. Best Buddies is proud to be at the forefront of this movement, advocating for inclusive workplaces where everyone, regardless of ability, can thrive and contribute meaningfully. So as we navigate through the National Disability Employment Awareness Month, let's not just applaud the accomplishments of individuals with disabilities, but commit ourselves to creating a future where every person, regardless of their abilities, can pursue their passions and contribute to the workforce. Thank you for your time, and let's continue to champion inclusivity and quality in all facets of our lives. All right, our next item is a presentation.
All right, our next item is a presentation. It's gonna be the long range transportation plan, which is division uh, 2050. And we have our uh, TPA deputy director of programs, Andrew Euler presenting. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, it's an exciting time at the Transportation Planning Agency. Again, I'm Andrew. Uh, I'm a service staff at the Palm Beach Transportation Planning Agency. Uh, right now, we're going through our five-year update of our 2050 long-range transportation plan. So this is tw Vision 2050. And uh, for, for those of you who have not really heard of the TPA, uh, we are a federally mandated agency uh, for urbanized areas to carry out the transportation planning process and how we prioritize federal and state funds uh, for our urban area. And our planning area is the entirety of Palm Beach County. Uh, our board's made up of elected officials throughout the county. It's our 13 largest municipalities. You serve as one of those seats on that board. It also includes county commissioners and the Port of Palm Beach. Uh, we also have uh, advisory committees who serve that, and we're a staff of 16. And uh, with that, it's really geared towards setting a long-term vision and how we're gonna spend those funds that come to our area mainly gas taxes from both the federal and state levels, uh, and how we're gonna invest in transportation into the future. Uh, we are not an owner or operator of roadways. We're really a collaborative group of those governing board members who formally vote uh, and approve where to put those funds. And so when we're talking about this long range transportation vision and what we do as an agency, even though we are the transportation planning agency, uh, it's really about quality of life uh, through all types of uh, portions of our life. So uh, our transportation system impacts, uh, you know, how you get to work and those transportation options you have for that. Uh, so it's access to opportunities. It's how we get to the doctor. Uh, and then it also impacts our affordability um, and our environment. Uh, obviously, we have uh, increasing uh, needs for housing um, with increasing costs of housing and also transportation are two biggest uh, items that we have at our households uh, to pay for. Um, so looking how we can create more efficiencies uh, with our land use and transportation connections to create more affordability for housing and transportation. And it's also providing uh, access to different ways of getting around Palm Beach County uh, for all ages and abilities. And then it's protecting our environment, right? So uh, what are we going to do for climate change as sea level rises and we have increases uh, in the, the urban heat island effect uh, in our region? Um, flooding, and so we're really integrating all this into our transportation improvement program, our, our long-range transportation plan. And so looking at our region, we do work with our partners, Broward and Miami-Dade, as well as Martin County, but our South Florida region between our three major counties here is expected to, to grow and be over 7 million people by uh, 2045. Right now in Palm Beach, we're at 1.5 million, uh, expected to grow by another 300,000, so looking around 1.8 million people as we head into 2045, 2050, right? So that quality of life we have uh, that's really great here in Palm Beach County, there is a lot of stresses on that and, and we really gotta uh, think into the future about how we're gonna maintain that quality of life for our residents and then our visitors. And so at the Transportation Planning Agency, what we're really trying to do is, is strive for other types of options and services to give our residents, uh, our commuters uh, and those uh, th those visitors to our county. So uh, obviously we have a lot of congestion and we're gonna continue to invest in at the state level and the county level, uh, Port Department of Transportation, Palm Beach County are still growing out our roadways. So you'll see major investments still in I-95 in the Turnpike, billions of dollars in the next few years to widen the Turnpike, major improvements on a lot of the I-95 interchanges. But we're really trying to look towards the future and about whether what other options we have to move people throughout the, the county comfortably and efficiently, right? So we're running out of space to widen roadways. Uh, how can we get people out of the car or more efficient efficiencies in the car, but also try other modes of travel? We're looking to grow by uh, around 12,000 people a year here uh, in Palm Beach County. Again, I mentioned 1.8 million residents by 2050. Uh, so that's around 4,000 to 5,000 households coming in that need to be built in the county every year. So trying to figure out where we can put those households. Uh, hopefully we can put those, place, those houses uh, in areas, uh, increased density in areas that, that um, could support that, that increase, uh, and, and hopefully on a transportation system that is efficient for them. And so that's what we're really looking at when we tackle this long range transportation plan, uh, more on the transportation side. 
Uh, and with this 25-year this planning horizon, uh, we really look at first establishing our goals and objectives, uh, and I'll go through what we have for the Palm Beach TPA and the county right now. Uh, right now, we're determining our transportation needs. Uh, so we're collecting projects right now from our municipalities, uh, from the state, and from the county. We'll establish those priorities about which ones we can do in the short term and the long term, uh, and then we'll program and fund those. And so our goals uh, at the TPA have always been to have a, a safe, efficient, and connected multimodal transportation system. Uh, another goal on top of that is resiliency. And so when we think about the objectives we have in our long-range plan, we're really focusing in these key areas. Um, ones I really want to point out for you all that are on the forefront is always safety. Uh, we continue to uh, be one of the most dangerous states in the nation when it comes to traffic fatalities. Um, and then not only are we the one of the most dangerous states, we're one of the most dangerous urbanized areas within our state, right? So uh, we continue to lead in a, in a poor metric there. And so we have a very strong focus on safety. I know that uh, your council does as well, your city as well, and has been pursuing a, a Vision Zero Action Plan yourself. So that's great to hear. Another new one for this one is resiliency. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, looking at different ways we can become more resilient, uh, not just when it comes to uh, you know, storms uh, uh, with, with sea level rise and flooding, uh, but also looking at adaptability with that and resiliency. Uh, so electric vehicle charging and then other types of ways of, of improving our environment. And so our timeline for this plan, we've already uh, uh, kicked off this and we're heading into fall now. It finally felt like fall today. So we'll say that is the call for projects is starting today, but it did start a few weeks ago. Uh, we have a call for projects uh, out to our municipalities and the county and, and the DOT. And so we're collecting all types of projects. So we've been working with your staff already. They do serve on our technical advisory board. Um, and we've also worked with your, your staff um, outside of that board as well um, and setting up meetings. And we're looking to get all the, the call for products for those. And it's really anything under the sun. Um, and we'll figure out how we can uh, showcase that and what, what's the next step for those projects and see if there are major priorities that we can fund or we can work on trying to get discretionary grants or other ways of, of moving those products forward. That's going to wrap up uh, late fall going into winter. And we're going to vet all those projects um, uh, from all the, the stakeholders and then create those uh, those priorities for those. Uh, and we're also going to have a needs assessment heading into winter. It was going to look at uh, all of our different types of modes and some additional things when it comes to uh, resiliency, new technologies. Then we'll head into scenario planning. And then lastly, budget implementation. So late summer 2024, that's when we're really wrapping up this plan. And so it'll be the culmination of all that and figuring out what we do most as an agency is the plan priorities and fund. So that's really going to set out the funding uh, mechanism, how we're going to get this done. And then again, plan adoption is, is scheduled for October of 2024. And so to get involved, uh, we have our website. I also provided a pamphlet uh, on your table. Uh, you can see uh, more information on that. Uh, you can just go to palmbeachtpa.org slash LRTP, and it has all of our resources on there. We're going to keep this page updated. I also have a few other handouts if any of the citizens would like to to get one for me afterwards, I'll stick around for a few minutes. Um, so some next steps uh, for citizens and then for this council. Uh, as I mentioned, we're already working with your, your staff when it comes to the call for projects, so projects that you guys have already considered uh, for Green Acres. Uh, but you can sign up for updates. Uh, we're hosting workshops uh, throughout the county. Right now, we also have a transportation survey up, uh, which you can do uh, for us. It's really set for visioning and sort of the needs that you see uh, as commuters within the county. Uh, there's a comment map where you can provide comments and feedback on, on places in the county. And then uh, heading more into that workshop portion, uh, we're going to host one here uh, in Green Acres. In the next slide, I'll show you where that's going to be located and at the time. Um, but what we're really looking at in this plan is this mobility, mobility vision for 2050. And it includes a major uh, investment in our 561 corridors, and those are some of our major roadways throughout the county. How can we provide a safer, more efficient service uh, in those areas? Uh, so major investment in those areas. Uh, there's also Palm Trend and their investments countywide. 
and uh, really looking at mobility options to get to and from those major corridors and how can we uh, transport people and goods along those major corridors. So that's a really big investment or prioritization of this, this plan. And what we're doing in more detail with that, uh, that corridor assessment is really looking at, as I mentioned, uh, land use, uh, housing being a, a big component of something that we're trying to, to see in our scenario planning. And so we're looking at some of these major corridors that uh, have the opportunity to have different types of uh, modes of travel, so possibly uh, major transit investments. And are these uh, sites available for uh, opportunities to build at a higher density and intensity uh, for enhancements to really have that, that land use and transportation connection and connectivity. And so the upcoming meeting for Green Acres is going to be taking place uh, next week, October 23rd. Uh, it's going to be from 4 to 6 p.m. and it's going to be at the Green Acres Community Center uh, Banquet Hall. And so with that, we're going to have more information on the LRTP, uh, but we'll also have some more specific uh, details when it comes to that 561 vision uh, and then community needs as it relates to, to Green Acres. And so that's all I have for you. Um, as I mentioned again, you can uh, sign up at our website, palmbeachtpa.org slash LRTP, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Andrew. Are there any comments or questions from the council? Andrew, uh, I think that was a great presentation. Thank you for taking the time to uh, share this information with us uh, for the audience, our residents. Uh, take time and, and visit this uh, page. I strongly encourage you to also do the survey. Uh, I think that's uh, worthwhile input that you're going to provide uh, to the uh, TPA and us making the decisions. It's also great to see what, what ideas you, you see. So um, if you're available, it's next week, correct? Right. The, yep. the workshop. So if you're available, uh, join us at the community center and be part of the conversation. All right. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you for your time. All right. Moving on to our consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve consent agenda. Second. All right. I have a motion made by Councilmember Dugo, second by Councilmember Bousquet. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That motion carries five. All right, we're now moving on to a regular agenda. The first item is public hearing ordinance 2023-10, first reading. If I can have our city clerk, please read the ordinance by title. Ordinance 2023-10, first reading, amending chapter 16, article one in general, section 16-1 definitions, article three, district regulations, division eight, office professional institutional, section 16-425, Division 9, Commercial Neighborhood, Section 16-450. Division 10, Commercial General, Section 16-475. Division 11, Commercial Intensive, Section 16-500. Division 14, Mixed Development, Section 16-546. Division 15, Mixed Use Development, Office, Section 16-562. And Division 16, Mixed Use Development, Original Section, Section 16-577. Creating Chapter 9, Miscellaneous Offenses, Division 1, Section 9 through 1, 0 prohibiting the dispensing of medical marijuana within the city, providing that each and every other section and subsection of 16, chapter 16 zoning regulations shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing for non-conforming uses, providing for repeal of conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in code, and providing for an effective date. And today we have our city attorney, uh, Christy Godot, presenting. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is ordinance 2023-10 on first reading. Um, as you may recall, uh, back in 2016-2017, the Florida Legislature um, changed the law to allow for medical marijuana treatment center uh, dispensary facilities. Um, at that time, cities had the option of deciding whether or not to allow these types of dispensaries within their city. Um, Green Acres entered a moratorium shortly thereafter, and in 2019, the city adopted an ordinance to, um, in accordance with the Florida statute, to prohibit the medical marijuana um, dispensaries within the city. Um, in 2020, the city changed course and adopted an ordinance to allow the medical marijuana dispensaries in the commercial zoning districts and in the mixed-use zoning districts. 
um, now in 2023, as other cities and counties are looking at this issue, there's a concern that perhaps um, the state may be moving to allow uh, recreational marijuana. And the con one of the concerns is that these medical marijuana dispensaries would be the first facilities to be able to do that. Um, recognizing that the city has now um, given direction uh, to proceed with an ordinance that would ban the medical marijuana dispensaries, new ones within the city. The, the ones that are existing would allow to continue operating as non-conforming uses. And it would also adopt in chapter nine, a um, general offense prohibition against the dispensary of medical marijuana within the city. So on first reading, staff is recommending approval of this ordinance, and I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from the council? Seeing none, I'd like to open public hearing for ordinance 2023-010. Uh, first reading, anyone wishing to speak in favor of the ordinance, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition of the ordinance, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, public hearing is now closed. Make a motion to approve ordinance 2023-10 for on first reading. Second. All right, I have a motion made by Council Member, Member Tharp, second by Council Member Busquet. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, that motion carries 5-0. All right, moving on to our next item, public hearing for ordinance 2023-14, first reading. If I can have our city clerk, please read the ordinance. Ordinance 2023-14, first reading, amending chapter 16, zoning regulations, article one in general, section 16-1, definitions by amending, certain definitions and adding definitions related to adult arcades, prohibiting simulated gambling devices and adult arcades and providing for non-conforming uses, creating chapter nine, miscellaneous offenses, division one, section 9-11, providing that each and every section and subsection of chapter 16 zoning regulations shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing for repeal of conflict in ordinances, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in code, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. And once again, we have our city attorney, Chrissy Goodell, presenting. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is ordinance 2023-14 on first reading. Um, this ordinance, much like the last ordinance, is proposing a uh, ban on new adult arcades, which are any establishment that um, uh, have within their establishment a simulated game gambling device. And a simulated gambling device is defined in the proposed ordinance as any type of essentially game or device that would allow the user to directly or indirectly receive some type of benefit, whether that's a direct monetary benefit or otherwise. Um, the concern with this ordinance that's been expressed by city administration is that oftentimes these lead to um, these types of establishment actually engaging in gambling or that it creates an atmosphere for criminal activity. Um, like the last ordinance, this ordinance would ban the adult arcades. However, the ones that are currently legally existing, and I believe there is one within the city that's currently existing, it would be allowed to continue as a non-conforming use. This also makes the change to the uh, zoning code, so it would prohibit those types of establishment within um, the city. And it also creates a general offense under Chapter 9 of the city's code that would prohibit um, having these types of devices and making them available for public use within the city. Um, city staff is recommending approval for first reading of Orange 2023-14. Are there any comments or questions from the council? Thank you. Uh, uh, council Member Diaz. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, I'm not sure if my question is to staff, city attorney, or whoever can answer it, but based on the definition we just heard of what, um, what kind of games um, are allowed as far as the something is received as a benefit, would this create a issue for any establishment that serves families that might have a redemption ticket type um, system, like uh, the kid plays the game, it gives tickets, the, the tickets are exchanged for a, a token or a, a, a toy? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may respond. Um, 
Council Person Diaz, I believe your, you know, your comment is directly on point. We purposely drafted the ordinance so that some of the language would be broad because um, when these adult arcades first came into existence, um, some of them were outright a gambling device. Other ones, they came up with creative ways to encourage folks to come in and use these types of devices. And so when we were drafting this, one of the concerns was um, when I play a video game like Ms. Pac-Man and I do really well, I might get a chance to play, you know, get a free player or, you know, if you go to one of those kid family types of arcades, you get certain, you know, the little tickets, you can turn them for a toy. And so there were some concerns about that, but purposely we drafted that a little bit broad that would give the city some discretion to really go in and look at these types of devices and see if whether or not this is really catering towards an adult arcade and that it's really limited to adults and not a family establishment. Um, we can craft the language more specifically, but the concern is with crafting it too specific, folks will be creative and we'll see more of these popping up and we won't be able to have a ban on the record. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the council? Seeing none, I'd like to open public hearing for ordinance 2023 14 first reading. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of the ordinance, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, anyone wishing to speak in opposition of the ordinance, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, public hearing is now closed. Motion to approve ordinance 2023 14 on a first reading. All right, I have a motion made by Council Member Tharp, second by Council Member Dugo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that motion carries 5 0. All right, moving on to our next item. It's appointment of the Education Advisory Committee, and we have our City Manager, Andrew McHugh, presenting. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as, as all of you know, the City's Education Advisory Committee was established through Resolution 2023 31. Um, we are in the process of receiving applications. Uh, we do have a couple of applications in process. There are nine members to that committee, so if you do know of individuals that are interested that do meet the criteria outlined in the Education Advisory Committee uh, in that resolution, we would appreciate it if you could send them to us so that we can uh, talk through it with them and hopefully uh, have some additional interest. But this evening, staff is recommending the two student liaison applicants for approval by the council. Jesus Gonzalez is a high school student from John I. Leonard, uh, and Leliani Sanchez is a middle school student from L.C. Swain. She is also in our youth programs. Both applicants show interest in serving on the committee and are both city residents. So staff is recommending the appointment of Jesus and Leliani Sanchez, Jesus Gonzalez and Leliani Sanchez to, the, to serve as student members to the Education Advisory Committee. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions from the council? I have a question. Uh, uh, the Mayor, the Mayor Noble. Obviously, adding those two would give a total of 11 members. Uh, what represents a quorum in, in, on that committee? The, there are nine committee members. The nine committee members are the only ones that are voting, so five would be a quorum. The student, uh, student appointments are just liaison appointments, as is the council member appointee. That's also a liaison appointment. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like to Any other comments or questions? I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve. Second. All right, I have a motion made by council member Dugo, second by council member Diaz. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that motion carries 5-0. All right, tonight we don't have any discussion items. Uh, moving on to comments from the public on non-agenda items. Anyone wishing to speak, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. All right. Oh, we got one. <laughs> Move the mic down, please. Um, yeah, just a few things. Can you hear me? I would no. speak a little bit closer to the mic, but yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask about when someone came to present on the TPA that we didn't have the chance to ask questions to him. Um, is the city or municipality going to have um, comment cards at the municipal buildings so that people are aware about the questions in comment maps, you know, for traffic and whatnot? 
Also, um, when you do pictures for proclamations, can you be in front of Peter so that he's included? Thank I mean, you wouldn't know he's part of the council. <laughs> anyway, and also as far as the, the jog, church on jog, it's only 65% completed at this point. I just saw by a, a comment. So we have another maybe 10 years to go till that church is done. It's a concern because it's just sitting there. And then the other thing is the traffic exiting the Walmart Plaza. And that's it. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Thank you. All right, moving on to the city manager's report. City Manager McHugh. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just, just a few things this evening. Um, as we've discussed previously, we are working on putting together our committee for uh, in preparation for the city's 100th anniversary. While it's not technically the kickoff until uh, May of 2025, uh, there is much work to be done. So we are looking for uh, a council member representative to that committee. Um, so I was hoping that maybe the council would be able to recommend uh, one of your members to be able to serve on that committee. We are looking to have a meeting with the staff representatives um, before we put something out for businesses and um, also residents to serve as well. So if we can have that from the council, I would appreciate that. Um, in addition, we are confirmed uh, November the 2nd at 6 p.m. for our comp plan ear review workshop. Before you leave this evening, you will have your packets um, to begin review prior to that November the 2nd meeting. Um, we already talked about the TPA Central County Workshop. Um, we can follow up and, and uh, ask how the format will work and questions and um, interactive, how interactive that will be with the public that attends that meeting. Um, and specifically that meeting is around mobility uh, in the county. So um, it will be a very, uh, very informative workshop. And lastly, looking to request to cancel the second meeting in November. That is the week of Thanksgiving. We don't have anything on the agenda as a rule. We normally do cancel that one. So just asking, uh, requesting that from the council. That's all I have. All right. Uh, are there any comments or questions from or for the city manager? Seeing none, all right. Uh, consensus to cancel the second meeting in November, going from my right to my left? Yes. 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 All right, we have consensus on that. And uh, regarding the appointment of a uh, council member for that, um, for that committee, is that something that we can bring up for discussion at the next meeting? We can, we can add it to the agenda, yep. Perfect, thank you. That gives everybody time to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no other questions for the city manager? Seeing none, uh, city attorney's report. I do not have a report, thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, uh, moving on to the mayor's and city council's report. I'm gonna to start to my right, council member Tharp. I never report this evening. Deputy Mayor Noble. No report, thank you. Uh, council member Dugo. Just one item, I apologize. I won't be here for November 2nd, but I will review my comp package and address my issues via email with Ms. McHugh. Thank you. Councilmember Diaz. I'm just hoping to see all of our families out at Trunk or Treat on Thursday and uh, night out against crime on Friday night. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Busquet. Uh, nothing to report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as my report, I just wanted to um, address some of the comments that were made um, just so that I should clarify. We don't engage in, in uh, answering any public comments. I just want to clarify that. So sometimes it feels weird when people ask questions and we don't answer. So I just want to uh, uh, sort of express okay. that uh, we don't, we don't uh, address any uh, okay. comments. We do take those comments seriously and then we, uh, we do do our due diligence with those. And then if we need to talk offline, we'll be more than happy to do that. Um, regarding the presentations, the presentations are, are meant to be presented to the council. So they're not meant to, um, to, for the public, although this particular presentation sort of lended itself to it. So I don't know if the council needs to revisit that um, to let uh, input from the public. So uh, with that being said, I think that concludes uh, my comments. Um, seeing nothing else, meeting's adjourned. <laughs>